let's fire this puppy up. We have a virtual cockpit and we actually have another screen that pops up out of the dash here. Very slick. Now, the virtual cockpit is new for 2017 in the A3. So the new Audi models that are coming out will have virtual cockpit as an option. And I highly recommend it. It gives you a lot of versatility, such as this. I hit view, I go to large gauges and the traditional setup basically where the trip computer in the middle, okay? And now, if I change my tab to the map, I can get the map in the center. But if I change view again, I get the full map. Right now we're actually loading Google Earth as well. But what you get is the ability to search for destinations. So if I wanted to look for a specific restaurant in Austin that has specific tacos, Google will find it and it will send it to the nav, which is perfect. Not messing around with my phone while I'm driving is why you would want a connected car like this. And just look at this. I can have two perspectives as well. So I can have a zoom in on my center console or a zoom in on my instrument cluster. No matter how I set this up, it's for me. Let's go ahead and uh, mute the audio and take it for a spin around the block. Now, this is very similar to that S3 I recently drove, but this being the new 2017 means that it has updated headlights, some updated features, and overall, um, this is, to me, a baby A6. I like how the controls here are very easy to handle. I have a knob to turn the fan speed up and down, no stupid buttons. I have a knob to change my temperature. I can have it on auto mode. And I have large vents. Everything here is just easy. It's a great layout. And I have a touch pad. I also have a touch pad to write characters, numeric and alpha, for locations that I want to navigate to or things I want to search for. I have these awesome toggle buttons to go between each setting on the screen. The passenger can change those settings as well. I have a full screen here to myself. Now this car has a dual clutch transmission and it's brand spanking new. So I'm not going to drive it aggressively. I'm just going to get a feel for it. You know, these cars can be ordered with an optional sports suspension. It's only a $250 option. And it also is an option that's required when you get the 19 inch wheels. This one has the standard 18 inch wheels. The dual clutch is always in the right gear. You can tell the power from this engine feels much better than the GTI because it's planting all that power to all four wheels, not just the front wheels. It actually now includes auto emergency braking, which in my opinion is very important to have in a car these days. No matter what car you have, even Toyotas are now coming out with that automatic emergency braking. It's almost a requirement at this point. Now you can get a Prestige, which means that the Prestige version of this car also includes radar cruise. In this new 2017 A3, when you put the car in reverse, you now get traffic detection. So in addition to a camera and radar sensors, you get an alert letting you know that someone may be coming from the opposite direction. It helps you back out of tight parking spaces. It's a lot quieter in here than it is in the Gulf. You really don't hear any artificial resonance from a sound actor system. Now, if you did get the sport package, you get sport seats and drive select. Drive Select will allow you to customize and tailor the steering and the sound of the system as far as the exhaust, and it'll also allow you to change the mapping of the throttle. Now, even though this doesn't have Drive Select, I can still drop this down into sport mode, and now that'll hold the revs longer through the rev range, shift later, and the mapping changes as well. The car is always going to be very responsive, but in sport mode, you're getting, well, a sportier reaction. It's 60. This thing picks up speed quite remarkably. It, it's just like the Q7 was. You feel the surge, but you don't really hear it. 
it's not annoying in a way where you're uh, making a lot of noise in a sporty, aggressive way. It's just sort of subtle. And I know if you're coming from a TDI, you're used to that 236 pound-feet of torque off the line right away, you know, short gear changes and not a lot of noise. And I think this car kind of extends that experience. Now you have more torque in this one than you do from the TDI models, which is a bonus as well. If you go to into something like a Jetta GLI, that has 207 pound-feet of torque. Not quite as much as a TDI. The GTI does have the same amount of torque as this A3, but the A3 includes all-wheel drive. You can also get front-wheel drive in an A3 if your budget is tight and you want an Audi. Your odds are that you'll be having more chances buying an A3 than you will a GTI. There are a lot of similarities between the Golf and the A3, and that's the reason why you should consider it. Now, the cabin difference between the A3 and the Golf is extreme. So if you're coming from a Golf TDI, an A3 is still relatively the same size as the Golf, but at the same time, you're not in another Volkswagen Golf. You're in something a lot more refined. I have the ability to go track next and track back from the steering wheel, which is a great advantage. It's nice to be able to go next from the steering wheel, something that Volkswagens have been able to do for quite a long time. So there are features in this vehicle that bring it up to par with what you're used to in the Golf or the Jetta, but at the same time, it's a very smooth ride, a very silky, sexy, appealing ride. And at the same time, it's fun. And it's not overkill. It's not like an A4. Now, for some of you who want that GTI appeal, that sound and that sensibility, definitely get the GTI. If you're getting several grand from the TDI buyback, you can definitely buy down a lease or you can definitely put a lot more money down and just own a vehicle that you've always wanted. And to me, this is one option. This isn't the definite reason why you should buy it, but it's certainly something to consider. I even have blind spot monitors Especially when you have a window sticker back there, this makes it a lot easier to change lanes. The indicators are in the mirror and they light up a bright yellow orange color. And you can actually set that in the menu under vehicle. I have interior lighting in here as well. It's, it's a carryover from the uh, A3 of last year. What this vehicle does though is it totally checks off all those boxes. It isn't rear wheel drive, but it is all wheel drive. And even though uh, it has an automatic, it does have a manual drive capability. If you get the Sport Package, you also get paddles on the steering wheel and a flat bottom steering wheel. It has Bang & Olufsen, it has GPS, and it has auto dimming mirrors. It has all these things that are important to have when you get into a new car. The traffic collision prevention with auto emergency braking. It's Basically, it's brand new, and it's the best of what you can get in a brand new car. This is absolutely the latest tech and the latest look. And if you're going to buy a new car, you want a car that has just been updated. And this literally just came out. This car is fresh. Very fresh. The 2.0 A3 will be the only version of A3. The 1.8 is gone. So now when you say, I have an A3, it's very well known. It's the 2.0. It's either going to be front wheel drive or quattro. I even have heated seats. I also like how adjustable these headrests are. They go up and down and in and out. Something else you have in here is this great big sunshade. And the shade can actually be closed when the sunroof is open. By the way, when you open the sunroof, it's nice and big. It goes over my head. Some cars have sunroofs that are really small these days, and even though they extend outward from the car, they don't open up very deep. This one feels very big, very roomy. Now, I'm not gonna do a zero to 60 in this car because it's brand new and it's not mine, but I can tell you that the A3 2.0 is very quick.
I still have a button to control the center display if I want to not see it. I just hit the button, it disappears. If I press the button, it comes back up. Now, it does always display by default when the car is turned on. Not a bad thing, but it's not a button that can permanently make any changes. Something else this vehicle has, which is really nice to have in a city, is that when you come to a complete stop, the engine shuts off. And when you take your foot off the brake, the car starts back up. And because it's a dual clutch automatic, it starts and stops very smoothly. It can basically disengage itself with the clutch and you're no longer in gear. So when you start the car back up from a red light, it's very smooth and it accelerates just fine. And of course, when you put the car in reverse, the backup camera appears as well as sonar. And you have guides to tell you how close you are to the vehicle behind. So if you're at a slow speed, it will enable as well. And you can see that here on the screen. So there it is, the 2017 Audi A3 2.0 Quattro. Please thumbs up and share the word because the 2017 Audi A3 is a perfect alternative to people who are having a hard time finding a Golf GTI or want the Golf R but can't really reach it. This car I think is the perfect car. Thanks for watching.